Hello and welcome to Tech and More. In this video, we are going to have a look at the top three most commonly encountered exceptions and how you can handle them in Selenium WebDriver. Right? So let's start. Now you have this sample test case automated in front of you. And if you have been seeing the previous videos of this playlist, you know what this is, but I'll just give a quick walkthrough. So basically what we're doing in uh, line number 23, if you see, it says driver.get and then you have a URL. So basically you are opening a Chrome instance, you're maximizing it, then uh, navigating to a URL. And then from line number 26 to line number 28, you enter the username, you enter the password and you click on login, right? It's as simple as that. Now this is the use case. And uh, of course, whenever this testing is complete, you always have to go and close the window. So you do that using line number 41, which is driver.quit, right? Now let's talk about the first exception. That is the exception number one that we're going to discuss. That is no such session exception, right? So, uh, you know, a lot of talking, let's go and see how this script runs and do we encounter this issue or not, right? So we have triggered the execution and now it's going to go and open a window for us, enter the credit. I mean, you all, you know all this since you have been watching this playlist. And if not, please go and watch it because it's very critical to watch those videos to understand this one. Cool. So we have logged in and uh, now it's it has quit. So technically, you know, it did quit the window. So th there, sh there should not have been any errors, right? But now let's go and see what occurred. I'm going to expand console and a tip for you, please, whenever you're debugging or you have an issue, please expand the console because it gives you a lot of clarity to have a look at the error, right? Now, just pay attention on the line, which I'm going to highlight. That is exception in thread main, that is in the main function, then org.openqa.selenium.no such session exception. And then it gives you more information, which says session ID is null using web driver after calling quit question mark. See, it's so intelligent. It's so smart. It tells you that, you know what the session ID is null and, uh, and what is session ID? We'll, we'll talk about it, but all in all, it says, did you call any method after you declared quit? Yes, we did. So in line number 44, we have called driver and we have asked it to navigate to a URL. Now imagine this scenario while you're testing manually, right? You navigate to a URL. So let's see it from here. You navigate to a URL and then you put in the username, password and click on login and then you quit. That is driver.quit is basically closing the window, right? And then you again, simply want to pass the URL. Does it make sense? The last step will not make sense because the window is not open anymore, right? So that is why it will fail both manually and using automation, correct? So that is why it's very important to make sure that whenever next time you encounter such an exception, which says no such session exception, you always go and make sure that driver dot get, or for that matter, any other method is not implemented after driver dot quit. Right. And I hope that this logically makes sense as well. Right. Cool. That is exception number one. Now going to exception number two, let's comment it out for the time being. So in exception number two, what we are going to see is in line number 30, I have written down an X path for an element that is, which basically goes and clicks on the lead hyperlink. That is, there's a hyperlink on, uh, on the Salesforce instance, which, uh, which is termed or labeled as leads. It has to go and click on it, right? I have selected or located that particular element and then I store it in a web element. Now, what is it? All these things are discussed in previous videos. So please refer to them. And I simply want to go and click on that particular hyperlink. It's as simple as that, right? So technically, if you have been watching the videos till now, technically it should work. And let's see if it will or not, right? Cool. So again, logging in and uh, yeah, click on login button. And uh, let's see how it goes you have a lead hyperlink somewhere in this drop down right now let's go and see what did it do ah it threw an error it threw an exception which is exception handling java line number 33 right so in line number 33 it threw an exception now let's scroll a little above and let's again search for the exception or the error that it 
through you. I'm again going to highlight, it says exception in thread main, open qa.selenium.element not interactable, right? So whenever you read an exception termed as element not interactable or JavaScript executor exception, you have to have to use the JavaScript executor concept in Selenium WebDriver, right? Now, what is it? Okay, of course, in the, I think in last or last or last video, I have created a dedicated video on JavaScript executor, how to use it, what are its methods, what are its utilities, all those things. So please go and refer to them, right? But for folks who have watched it, when you face such an issue, you have to simply go and instantiate an object for JavaScript executor. And then you have to do what we have done in line number 36, right? Let me comment out line number 33 because it's of no use now. So I called the object, I gave the method as dot execute script. And then uh, you have this web element passed. So it will simply locate this element as it did earlier as well. But now it's going to use JavaScript executor to click on an element. So that will work, right? So that is exception number two, which is JavaScript executor or element not interactable exception makes sense. Now, let's go on to the third exception. That is, that is no such element exception. This is one of the most common exceptions that you'll encounter, trust me. So, and you know, this, this usually occurs from your careless mistakes because it might be a syntactical issue or sometimes by the developer's mistake, rather I, I would not say mistake is the right word due to changes in requirements or in changes of the location or in the changes of DOM, the X part that you wrote will not work might not work, right? So uh, by now you would have figured it out that no such element exception is basically when the element is not being located with the XPath that you gave, right? So let's do one thing. In line number 30, I have this XPath written and I'm what I'm going to do is by mistake, I'm going to, uh, you know, misspell the word leads. That is, I'm going to add an extra S, right? So till now it was working, but now let's see what it does again the last round of execution. Okay, it has opened the browser. We are here, logged in and uh, mm -mm -mm -mm. yeah. Okay, let's go to the console and let's see how it is behaving. Ah, it threw an error again, right? Let's see which exception did we encounter this time? So this time it was no such element exception as we discussed, right? So it says that unable to locate element method xpath. You have this xpath here. So technically what you do is that you go and copy this xpath and uh, you open your instance, click on inspect. And from here on you search for this xpath particularly, right? As you can see, there are zero of zero results. That means there is some problem, right? Now let me go and let me remove this extra S. And now it shows one of one. It even navigates you to that particular element, right? So most of the times, as per my experience, the no such element exception will occur when you have a case that is your some syntactical error happened or some DOM changes happened, right? So that is how you handle the no such element exception. That is, you look at the X path or you look at the syntax or the DOM. Cool. Now, one thing to note is that uh, no such frame exception and no such window exceptions are also very similar. That is, uh, this exceptions will occur when th that particular frame that you're looking for is not present on the DOM or that window is not present on the DOM, right? So this is the third and the last exception. Now, before we wrap up, just a, you know, sort of a note for you. There is one more exception that is timeout exception. I did not show it explicitly, but somehow we have handled it already. So in line number 19, we have driver dot manage dot timeouts dot implicitly wait dot duration, duration dot of seconds, right? So all in all, what it does is that it declares a wait of five seconds before each and every step to understand more about implicit wait, explicit wait and wait concept in general. Please refer to the previous videos in this playlist, but yes, all in all, to uh, make sure that you do not face the most, the most commonly common exceptions, that is timeout exception. You please use the wait concept that is, it can be implicit, it can be explicit depending upon the situations, but please make sure that you do it because, uh, you know, there are a lot of websites, there are a lot of elements, everything is implemented separately. So it's very important that you use the time concept very wisely to reduce your exceptions or to reduce your errors, right? So I think that's all for this video and I hope you liked it. If you did, please share it with your folks, subscribe it. It gives us a lot of motivation to 
carry on and uh, yeah see you in the next video thank you